Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to my YouTube cha channel and welcome to my new subscribers and a big hello to all my regulars. It's lovely to have you on board. I just thought I'd pop back today and create another journal page. This was the previous one that I created. It's, it's in a journal that you can have either this way or you can have it that way. And I quite fancy doing some pages sort of elongated like this. Um, now I did this page and that's on YouTube. It's the last video that I did. I absolutely love that. So what I thought I'd do is I'd create another page. Now this journal is a moleskin one and it's a watercolour album. And it says, uh, yeah, so it's a watercolour album and it's 200 um, GSM. Couldn't get my words out then. So it's got a little bit of a texture to it. So obviously you have to be aware when you're when you're stamping, but that's absolutely fine. So what, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm going to be using is the Broken Circles stencil. So sometimes the starting point is the hardest bit. You, you don't know where to start. So what I try to do is either think of it, am I going to use sprays? Am I going to use inks? Am I going to use a stencil or is it just going to be stamping? Once I decide on maybe a colour scheme, then I have a think whether it's going to just be stamping or maybe use a stencil. So I'm beginning with a stencil this time. And this is my starting point and this helps me to break my page up. It gives me that starting point so that I don't panic over white space. So I'm going for a more vintage make this time. So I'm inking my cut and dry foam, which you can see has seen better days, but I, I won't bin it, I'm terrible. But look, it's seen better days. It, a bit like me really, but it has seen better days. And what you need to do, either if you're using your blending brushes or your ink blending tools or your fine brushes with bristles, or you're using cut and dry foam, Always make sure that you've primed your whatever tool you're using with ink. You've primed it with ink so it's got a good layer of ink on there. And what I'm going to do is just apply that ink. Now, if you want to, you can hold that stencil in place just to make it a little bit easier for you. It's a lot easier if you hold it in place. So, um... Let's grab some low tack tape just to just to practice what I preach. So I'm just going to make that low tack tape and just press that on my skin just to make it a little bit more low tack, just so it doesn't stick on that page. And it just means then that you've got something just holding that in place. And what I want you to do is I want you to take your time just applying the ink through the stencil. So I'm going to, I don't want the harsh lines of the stencil. I just want these broken, the broken circle area. So I don't want the harsh lines. So I'm not going over the edges of the stencil. I think that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not going over these edges here. And the advantage if you uh, hinge it here at the top means that you can just lift your stencil and take a look at exactly what you've got if you just hinge it. So you can see maybe where you've missed areas. You can lift it up each time and just take a look if you've missed any areas. I am going to have to get some more. I'm going to have to get another piece of cotton dry foam because I want to use ground espresso so that I've got some of that darker colour. So I'm using ground espresso and vintage photo just to give me a little bit more, a little bit more depth of colour. Just to give me. Again, I can just lift that up. Oh, yes, I think that's enough. Have I got? 
Yeah, so I can just lift that up like so and then I can hinge it back down again because I've got that hinge at the top. So if you just anchor it, then you can add that hinge. Just move that out of the way. So what I'm going to do then, because this has got a watercolour card, I can then spritz that with water and just allow that to bleed a little bit. And what I want you to do is just give that a few moments, just so that that, that ink reacts with the moisture. Just give it a bit of time just to react with that moisture. Now what you need to decide is, you need to decide whether you want to do the whole length of the page, which I'm going to do, because that's what I'm doing in this journal. Now, while that just reacts with the ink, I'll just give that a bit of time and then I can dry it with my heat tool. It's up to you how much you let that react. I think I'm getting weaky, you know, because I could hardly pull the plug out then. So it's got some nice blurring, so I quite like that. So I like the blurring of the stencil. And if you want, you want to add a little bit more colour, you can tip that up, water it again, and just allow it to run. Just allow it to run down your page, just to give a little bit more texture. I like that because it's not so perfect. So I'll just give that a try. And obviously that's the advantage of using the watercolour card. Don't forget, it doesn't matter that you haven't got a journal or if you have got a journal, use the journal that you've got. Or if you prefer not to work directly in the journal, cut a piece of card the size of your journal, work on that and then stick it in just makes it a bit easier for you if you're a bit worried about working directly in your journal. So I like this now that it's a bit more muted and softer in feel. So I'm just giving that a dry. And because it's got that watercolour card, obviously it reacts to the moisture now i will tell you i think mine's about five and a half by just over eight inches in length i did measure in my previous video so just give that a blot okay so what i class now is i've broken the white page so because i've broken the white page it doesn't feel as scary which is quite nice so what i'm going to do now is go to the top half of my page to bring it in to my project. So I'm going to go with the vintage photo. Just take my ink again and obviously you can hinge it if you wish. It makes it a bit easier for you. But I'm not necessarily adding the whole image of this. I'm going to be a little bit more random with this one. So it, it's not necessarily going to have all of it so I'm just going to add part of it so I'm going to have my ground espresso so if you hinge it it means that you can take a look a little bit easier at what you've got if you hinge it I just hold it in place most of the time and just lift that up so I've just got part of the image there and what I'm going to do just to extend it is just let me move this down so you can see. It's now resting on my boobs. I just thought I'd let you know that professional point. I've actually got the journal resting on my chest. Nothing like a professional. You know how professional I am. So just add a little bit there, a little bit of the ground espresso, just to give a little bit more darkness. There we go. See, once you've done it once, you get quite into it and you get a little bit quicker. But there's no rush. It doesn't have to be rushed. 
So what I'm going to do now is take exactly like I did before and this time I'm going to let it run into the first page. I couldn't get my words out. I'm letting it run into my first page. So there you can see it's just running into my first page. Let me get that down to the bottom. There we go. And then I'm going to give that a dry. And now I've broken that white space. I don't feel as frightened or as, not frightened, but intimidated by that white space because I've broken it. And it feels like, right, I've made a start, I'm okay now. And if you're worried about breaking the white space, just do your stencil work and then walk away. Don't sort of get too et up that you think that you've got to do everything all in one go. If you just want to do the stencil, do the stencil. And where it's seeped through from the previous page, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. It just all adds to the texture of the page. So that's absolutely fine. What you can do, you can add sort of washi tape down the centre of your page if you wish. I mean, I may be adding washi tape anyway, it depends how the, the page develops. So I'm just, you see, even my purple went through to my next page as well. So you can always add sort of some tape down the centre before you start work. I don't really bother. So just giving that a dry. Now let's just turn it on its side, just so you can see. Not that there's not much room on this desk at all. Just so that you can see the whole length of the page. So I've got that shape of them broken circles, and I've got those lines, but it's more muted because I've added moisture, which really adds to the design. And I already love the flow going down the page. That makes me happy. And you can just dab anywhere that... There we go. And this, this journal isn't about adding too much bulk. You know, on my previous page, I did cut this out, but it's not too much bulk at all. So it's not about adding too much bulk. Right. So I can feel already that... I've got a flow going down the page. So it already sort of entices me to add a little bit of stamping. And what I want to do is use the Garden Mashup stamp set. And this has actually got 20% off on uh, Creating Craft at the moment. Uh, I think if you go to Let Leone Loose Shows, that aired on the Wednesday afternoon at three o'clock on Let Leone Loose, you can get this with 20% off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some stamping going down the page. And I don't know about you, but when I start stamping, there's always something else I need. I can pull everything out, but there's always something else I need every single time. Right, so what I'm going to do is take the garden mashup. Now I'm using pine cone ink. So you've got to decide whether you want that darker color or you want to stamp second generation. Now, if I'm unsure, what I do is I always go with the second generation first. So press the first generation off because that's quite dark. And then what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of, little bit of stamping just going down, just going down the page. Oh yes, second generation. And don't forget, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is your background. So what I've got instantly is something that breaks the page. Because it's a little bit darker, it lifts from the background. So it already the layers are coming upwards towards us and it's forcing this background in to the background. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add, I'm going to elongate the stamping. So let's pick a different area of the 
stamp. Let's just stamp that off gently. See, because you want to leave some ink definitely on there. And then just press this down. You can lift up to see, see what you've got. And you can see I've now extended that stamping just going around there. And there's so many stamps that you can add that can sort of extend um, the imagery. It's just remembering how many stamp sets that you've got, but you can just extend that with lots of other different stamps. So what I'm going to do now is because I've got this flow here, I'm going to extend the flow up here as well. So I'm doing my usual, I'm sort of tilting. It's not very easy to work so that you can see it. It's a bit difficult. So let's just, and what I'm doing is I'm not pressing the stamp onto the copier paper. I'm just resting it on the copier paper, just so I get some dark and light areas. It just gives me dark and light areas. Just extending that stamping just up here. And I like it because I've got those dark and light areas just all the way down. So what I'm going to do is, let me just move this up, is just extend this up a little bit here. So let's take a little bit of a different area of the stamp. The hardest bit is remembering where you've inked. That's my problem. I'm going to have to just, just tilt it like that. And just extend that stamping just a little bit. Just up there. You see, this is what I like about the garden mashup. The garden mashup gives me a lovely background, but it isn't. Just, just lovely. Absolutely love it. So I just love the flow that that gives to the page. Just makes me happy. Right, we'll just, I can't pick this up at, you know, can't pick the plastic up. Oh, I was driving myself mad then. So I don't clean the stamp. I can just, if I want to put it back in the packaging, I can just dab off the excess and just place that back in the packaging. And I've got words on there I can use as well separately. So I can use words separately as well. I'm just thinking of some circles. Just bear with me. Just... Don't know whether I want some. Where's the? Hmm. It's just deciding. You know, you've got so many stamp sets with circles on. It's just making sure that you don't then go and spoil it by adding too much. But I've got these circles here on the crow so I could add a little bit of detail here from the crow. I like adding parts of stamps as well. I just think it makes it makes it fun. So what you want to do then is you've now got this so you've got your bottom layer which is in the background. You've got your darker layer which brings it up into the foreground and then what I'm going to do is make this little touch of stamping a little bit darker. A little bit darker. Where's my sparrow? Oh, he's there. So just a little bit darker. So I'm making this in black ink because it'll just make it even more to the foreground because you've got that dark stamping. 
I'm using the stamp as is because it can be a little bit more random. So now what I love about this is that when you layer these circles, they layer beautifully over the garden mashup. Absolutely love it. So what I've done here is I've got this here because let me show you what I'm thinking because I want the sparrow. I want the big sparrow. So let's just take him off the packaging and then I'll lose him because I've put everything everywhere. And you see, I'm going to add the big sparrow here. Yes. I told you I'd lose him. I put the sparrow down and it's instantly, instantly lost. Let's just place that there. So I've just sort of, what I can do is I can also add my sparrow. This is the actual stamp and I can place this sort of down on my page. So I can leave it there where the sparrow is going to go. And then I can add my other stamping. So now I know where the sparrow is going. So I can just move it slightly and add a bit of stamping here. Bring down my sparrow and I know that it's going to go there. So I can still see the two the circles here. So I can see exactly where I want to add that stamping. So just using the imagery again from the crow, the circles from the crow. And I'm just going to add, I'm just elongating that stamping. Just from the crow. So I've got a nice three stamping there. Just place the crow there. So I can see where that's going and then I can use my sparrow with the black because that's got an, a, an S in part of the circle. So I'll just use part of the circle because I don't want his feet to be stamped. So I can just use part of that S. And I can just bring that in just here and I can just extend the stamping. You've got that S on there. You can see I'm just extending the stamping. Just extending it a little bit. You can use whatever circles that you wish. It's entirely up to you. You've got loads of stamps with circles on so you can use whichever circles you wish to extend the imagery it's up to you which you use so i'm just extending some of this stamping just a little bit here and there and obviously just to add that flow of the image i'm just adding a little bit more stamping just to give me that flow and i'm doing that with the black the black ink because that will bring everything to the foreground so i'm just using that with the black ink and i'm just taking the ink off my little bird's feet just add a little bit of ink to that and i'll just add a little little s there so I'm extending my stamping, which I absolutely love. I love the fact that I can, I can extend it. And if you just miss a little bit, just colour it in with a black micron pen. So what you can see is you can see I've extended the stamping a bit and I've got a beautiful flow of imagery. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stamp my let's move this out of the way i'm now going to stamp my sparrow which i think is a beautiful image and i just want the sparrow itself the white card couldn't think what i wanted
just grab that and we're going to stamp our sparrow in Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. I couldn't think what ink I was doing it in then. So just give that a nice, nice inking. And then we can add this to our white card. And I love this image. It's a nice size. It's a nice size for a card, but it's also a lovely size for a journal page as well. Look at that. I just think that image is just beautiful. Right, paintbrush, paintbrush. Spend my life saying paintbrush. Let me just make sure that paintbrush is clean because goodness knows what colour I'll have on there. Oh, it's act can you believe it? It's actually clean. Don't die of shock. Oh, crikey. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the vintage photo Distress Oxide Ink. I'm going to add a bit of colour just to our sparrow. So just, and what I'm doing is, I'm, what I'm doing is, uh, what I always say is I'm placing down a base colour. So it's like a wash. So I'm placing a wash down. Just... I can get a feel for what the bird looks like with some colour on. But what I'm doing is I'm leaving the light area here. So I've got that wash on there and then I instantly know that I go in with a bit more depth of colour. Just here where those, where those feathers may overlap. So it's just giving a suggestion that it's a little bit darker just in areas so it overlaps here and we're just going to add a little bit of darkness just there you can blend that out a little bit just so that you haven't got sort of the harsh edges so just blend that out a little bit and it's like everything really it's not it's not something that you rush when you're colouring. So I'm just going to add a little bit of darkness and then feathers there. I'm just going to bring a little bit more darkness here. So where I've sort of put my lines on my drawing, it sort of gives me a hint of where I need a little bit of darkness. You don't have to be precise. You know, we're not doing a botanical art picture. We're doing something we enjoy and we're, we're not going to be too critical. So I'm just, just going to add a little bit more moisture just to blend that out a little bit. Pick a little bit more colour up. Just extend it a little bit down here. And then just pick up that wash again and just add a little bit more of the wash. And what I've done is I've got a bit of lightness here on the top of the head and a bit of lightness here just, just in the stomach. And what I always do is I for always forget the poor bird's feet. I do it every single time. I forget that the poor bird needs some colour in his feet. So just add a little bit of colour there. And what you can do is you can let that dry if you wish and then just give it a little bit more of the layers. It's entirely up to you. I won't wipe away that brown just yet, just in case. I'm just going to add the dot of the eye back in with my white gel pen. I'm going to let it dry before I add a little bit more gel pen work. And let's just cut that out. 
So what I'm going to do is just we'll cut the circle out as well, just to give a little pop. It's entirely up to you if you want to leave a little white border. I think I'm going to leave a little, a little narrow border on this occasion. Just so that it lifts a little bit more. So just take your time. And I haven't got rid of that, that brown yet, just, just in case. And there's something about the beards. I absolutely adore the beards. I just think they go with everything. I think they work with everything. I'm just going to cut that little, that little, around that little foot and it's when I get to here I have to remember not to cut through the circle to the feet it's just an automatic reaction I instantly want to go cut through the circle to the feet there we go so we can just add a little bit of now it's got some moisture in that so we can add a little bit of see so you've got your little uh, robin here so what I want to do is just let me just grab a circle what I do is I always have several circles cut out just in case I want to add you see with the the white circle it just it just pops a little bit so we can bring him down there like that the little white circle just makes that pop a bit and also echoes the circles here so it does pop a little bit you can decide whether you want to add more circles but you don't want to cover up too much of your stamping so you just need to have a think let me just have a look at that so you don't want to cover up everything that you've done. You don't want to cover up all the stamping that you've done. But what I do know is I want that circle to stay reasonably plain. I don't want it to be too detailed. So what I'm going to do is just wipe up, move these. I will give you the sizes of the circles. You can just draw around lids or anything like that. No problem at all. What I'm going to do then is grab... Did I leave it out? No, I didn't. I always say, did I leave it out? And of course I didn't leave it out. I've got Salty Ocean. So we've got these two smaller circles. Let's grab Salty Ocean. Let me just measure the circles, just so that you know what size circles. So the circle behind the beard is two and a quarter inches. These other circles are, that's one and three quarter inches. And that's one and a quarter. One and a quarter, one and three quarters, and two and a quarter. But seriously, as long as your circles work, just draw around a lid, it doesn't matter. Right, what I'm going to do then is use the garden mashup again. But this time I'm going to bring in a touch of blue. Or am I going to bring in a touch of pink? just deciding whether I'm adding a flower um, now we'll bring in the blue because I've done a brown and pink project with my new release that was released on the TV so no so what I'm going to do is just take the garden mash up and I'm using salty ocean salty ocean ink and I can't decide which area of the stamp I want so I'm inking a big chunk of the stamp. And what I'm going to do is place the two circles like so. And then I'm just going to hover 
around and decide where I want to press that blue ink. Just adds a touch of blue just to my just to my card. It'll just add the right amount of blue. Not too much, but just enough. So let's just clean that stamp. I all I never clean my stamp apart from when I use distress oxides and paint because the distress oxide will leave sort of a chalky film on your stamp and if you then go and use your Versafine Clair Nocturne ink it then that it's not as sort of clear. So I'm just removing that. Right so I've now got my blue and that blue works beautifully with the brown. So what I'm going to do now is just stick down my circle first. So let's stick down that circle. You can always put a pencil mark of where your circle was so you don't lose where it was or you can take a photograph. It's entirely up to you. So there's always that option. So just allow that just to make sure you make sure you've got no ink on your fingers. I have to say that's a joke. I'm covered in brown ink. Why my wipes not? So I'm actually covered in brown ink. Chucked a packet of baby wipes on the floor. So if you're getting a little bit mucky, which standard practice for Tracy, just give your fingers a little bit of a wipe. Just, just give them a wipe. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to add a little bit of shading just, just around the circle, like so. A little bit of water. And we're just going to add the shading around there just to just to lift that up a little bit and again the intense pencils react beautifully because I've got this watercolor let me just turn the page because it just because I've got that watercolor card it reacts beautifully to the moisture and it gives me that shading. What I'm going to do then is just place my Robin where I want him to go and then I can decide where I want to put my little, my little circles. So just decide where you want those so I quite like that there so I've got to stick the circles down first because I can't stick the sparrow down I'm sure I called it the wrong name earlier you know so just stick that down first and then I can decide then the sparrow can go down last but you can still see that stamping in the background. You've still got that flow. I can then add my sparrow, which I can just bend a little bit. I mean, I'm still going to stick in pretty flat anyway. I'm not going to give any depth, sort of, I'm not putting on 3D foam because I don't want this journal to be too bulky. It could be bulky enough with just a few layers of card, so I don't want it to get too, too bulky. So just place that down, just so that you can see the image there. So then you look and you think, where did you put that? There we go. So just make sure. If you, you're finding that your hands are getting in a little bit of a, a mess, 
just pick the copy of paper up and the warmth from your hands will just make sure that that sticks down properly. And then I can go around, just go around the circle. I can go around this circle here just to add a little bit of depth. Just go around there. And just blend around the two. And then with the black that's still on here, I can just add a little bit of shading just to the beard just just by adding some of the black that was just there on the actual brush so I've just added a little bit of shading just underneath the little beard there because I can add that, it was already on the brush, so I didn't need to add more. So what I'm going to do then is put the lid on my adhesive. Just take um, the salty ocean, just add a little bit of the salty ocean. Just spritz that with water. And then just pick some up and just add some splatters of the salty ocean. You can take the excess off if you just want really fine ones. And just add, so tap off the excess and add your really fine ones if you wish. Bring it down and add some to the top page. Just add some of those splatters to the top page just to bring in that blue. If like me, you get it everywhere, just make sure that you're including all over my glasses, but that's standard practice. Just so you can see at the moment. I'm then going to just add a little bit, don't go and put your hand in the blue, a little bit of white just on the beak with my gel pen and just a little bit of white just going down, just going down the body just to add a little bit of, just a few little white highlights just on there. So what you need to do then is just allow the splatters just to have a little dry. So we shall do that. Just put it on one side and then let's grab our sparrow again. Let's just move this out of the way. I have actually got the sparrow wording, so we can use the sparrow wording. So let's stamp that. Let's put that sparrow back. So actually, I've actually got the word, the sparrow word, which is perfect because that can act as like an embellishment. Let's grab some card. I'm going to stamp this in black. Don't know why I'm placing it all the way down there. So I'm going to stamp that sentiment in black just so that that pops on the page. Normally I put it against a straight edge, but I'm not going to waste this card even though there's no straight edge. So I normally put it against a straight edge because then it just makes it easier to cut out 
so whoops so just cut that out like so just cut the little text out there we go then we can bring our page in just gives it a few moments just to just to settle and I think I think I could have cut out straighter that's a bit better so I'm just going to place that sparrow here just so it's added to the cluster so just going to add that there. Just adds that to that that little that little cluster, like so. Just giving that time just to grab hold on there, and then I'm just going to add a little bit. Of shading just at the bottom of the weird just to just to give it a little bit of shading just so that you can see the sparrow on there just sort of works nicely just on there so what I'm going to do is add my white spatters now because then they can just be drying whilst I cut out the next thing. So just add some white splatters to all the way up your page. There we go. Just add some white splatters on there. And let's move that out the way. Just put that lid on the adhesive. Then if I go back to the sparrow set, where's my little sparrow? Place that on there. I don't think I've got that in the right place, but hey ho. There's actually a little, there's a little sparrow, which I love because because I've got that. I can add it to my other page as if it's like a, a suggestion of what's on the main focal, main focal page. And I've added my white splatters to my acrylic block. And you like how I'm being good and just, I don't need this size acrylic block, but it's the one I've got with me, so I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to ink the smaller sparrow Again, with the, with the uh, black ink. And it's got all the same details on that's on the main focal image. So I quite like that. And what I'm going to do is just add a little dot in the eye. And I think on this one, I'll just cut this out because it might be a little bit harder to cut out if I add moisture colouring it with a touch of colour. It might be a little bit harder to cut out because I'm live doing the video. If there's a bit of moisture in my card, it'll be a bit, a bit, a little bit harder to cut out because the card will be softer. So I'll do the cutting out first on this occasion. Just, again, I'm just leaving a little, a little white border. But this gives, because then I can add the same image to the page. Let me show you where I'm going. So it means that I can go to this top page 
and I can add a sparrow here so it echoes what's on the bottom page so it echoes that it's on the bottom page but what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of colour oh. do you want to know what I did then I actually missed the container that I was putting the scissors in oh I don't do things by halves Now that's got blue on, so let's just clean that. And just add a little bit of little bit of a wash. Little bit of a wash. When you're adding a wash, don't add too much moisture to your brush. Yes, you want water because it doesn't become a wa a wash if you don't add the water but because you've got that white border around the edge of the beard and I've cut it out first you don't want to sort of go over that edge you want to keep that whiteness but just because it's a smaller image doesn't mean that you shouldn't add that little bit of detail by adding the darker element the darker edges to your beard you still want to add the darker detail. Just going to reiterate the little white dot. And you know what I've done, don't you? Poor little feet again. I don't know what it is about the poor beard feet. Beard's feet, I have no idea. So what you've got then is let's move that out to there you've then got this here but obviously you don't want it to fade into the background so i'm going to take one of those smaller circles again the smallest circle and i'm just going to add the small circle just just a little bit behind just so that he pops a little bit so let's add that circle gluing it the wrong way add that circle so add that here just like so and then add my little sparrow just add that Like so. I do like a bit of faffing. That whittle, 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 little white circle just makes it pop a little bit more. We don't want to forget that shading, which we could have done before we added the beard. But it's not a problem, really. So just adding a little bit of shading just around that circle. Just so that we can blend that out and what you're doing is you're not making each page exactly the same but you're carrying on the theme you don't want it to be disjointed by adding a different theme so you can see I've got that I've got the touches of blue at the top just so that you can see that and then coming down we've got the sparrow so what I've got then is I've got some other wording on the stamp set. It is here. And this wording is so high. Let me just place that back. Just add that text. I've got the smallest piece of card ever. should fit on again using my black ink just stamp that on there oh I think it only just fits on now you can have it as one word 
going along or you can have it as two words. Well, obviously it's two words, but you know what I mean. Let's see if I can pick the scissors up and not drop them this time. And sometimes if your sentiments are cut out a little bit quirky, it, it sometimes looks perfect for a journal page. There we go. So what I'm going to do then is add the words so high to my top page. So add that word so high. There. And I have to read them out every time because it's just what I do. It's one of my bad habits. I have to read and state exactly what's there in front of you. So just adding some of that ink tense pencil just underneath. Like so, just to give me a little bit of shading just underneath there, just so that you can see that. You see now, if I was making a card, I can add bulkier embellishments. I can add little clips and different things, but I don't want to do that with my journal page and make it too bulky. What I need to decide now It's deciding whether you want any florals to your design. Let me just take this off and just adding, just see if I want to add any floral to the design. I know I've added the word sparrow there, but that doesn't matter because I can add it over the top as well. Let me just stamp it out and just decide then. So I just need another. You see, this has got leaves and everything. This is what I'm thinking. Maybe I just want a single stem flower. Where's that? Maybe I want a single stem flower. I think I want a single stem flower. Just think it'll work a bit better. So I'm going to use worded petals. I love the viola, but I didn't want the leaves. So I'm going to take a single flower from the worded petals. And I can actually just cut the stem out and the flower. Just ink that with my black, black ink. Will it fit on there? It will indeed. I love this flower from the worded petals. There we go. Oh, I just love the shape of it and the size of it. I wish I've got some more room on my desk, I know that much. Right, what we're going to do then, is we're going to colour it with our salty ocean. Just need to make sure that brush is clean, because I've used the black, the, the brown ink. Let me just... Take this and I'm going to just add a little bit of moisture just at the bottom. Of the petals just give me a little bit of moisture just so that it moves 
a little bit. I'll actually just put that all over the petals. And then what I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of this blue. Just add the darker, the darkest of the blue. So I'm picking up that neat colour and I'm just going to add the darkest of the blue just here at the tips of the petals. Just add that at the darkest, darkest area. And then I'm going to clean the brush so it runs clean. And then I can just blend, just blend it out a little bit. just so that I've got no harsh lines. Just blend that out a touch. And what I'll do then is just pick up a little bit more, a little bit more of the color, just a little touch of it, just for each petal and blend it out. So add the darkest touch to the tip and then blend out until it goes really light. So take the darkest, put it in the tip, the base of the flower, and then blend that out and it gets lighter. And if you find that the tip isn't looking dark enough, just add a little bit more of that blue. So take it to the tip, and then blend. If you've got too much colour on it and it's blending too dark, just take a little bit of that colour off. Just there we go. So just adding a little bit little bit more of this colour here. A little bit of water. My brush is getting a bit dry now. Just to blend that out. Just to give it some of that blue colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the stems the stem of the plant in white, just so that pops a little bit more. And then we'll just cut that out. Just going to leave a little bit of a, a white border. And journal pages, because if what you have to remember is this is this is a, a, a sort of a two page spread, even though there's only touches on the other page. So it does take a little bit longer to create. Well, it does me anyway. But you have to be a bit careful now because I'm not letting it dry. Normally you would let things dry before you cut them out because what you're doing is you're cutting out a piece of card that's got moisture in there so because it's got moisture in there it's a it, it's squishy so you you can just you can't you're in danger of cutting tearing the card so you just have to be aware of that when you when you're cutting out But again, a nice, easy flower just to cut out, especially if your card isn't wet, unlike mine. There we go. Now you can see why I added the single stem because I can add it, let me just. So what I tend to do is look, look through the, 
the page whether you want it at the same level as the bird which which I don't want it at the same level as the bird I think I want it a little bit higher than the bird so just decide where you want it I want it to be in the cluster so it's part of the cluster that just makes me happy just add just add some dots down there and if you can't remember where you were going to put it then just take a picture or make a pencil mark whichever is easy for you just grabbing my copy of paper just so I can press that down. There we go. And we just need to highlight that a little bit more. I was looking for my lid then. So I'm just going to add a little bit of, just a little bit of shading just around just around the the stem here the bottom the sort of the back end of the stem so I'm going to add a little bit of shading just there just that back side of the stem and then just under just under the flower under the flower petal just to give it a little bit more highlight and then we'll just take a little little gel pen and just add a few touches of the white just to just to there So it just adds a little, little element. And what I'm going to do, just to make that a little bit lighter, I'm just going to add my white paint. without oh my wind is just blown open so just add a little touch of the white paint we're nearly finished now so just add some little little touches of white just to the flower just to it's nice to color things different ways sometimes it's nice to leave the white area sometimes it's nice to add some little touches of white so we'll just add some to the beard as well just add a little there we go let's wipe that up forgot to wipe the end of my ball tool before. I'm covered in paint. Right, and I think that might be our page almost there. So what you've got is you've got your flower and your sparrow and you've got a nice little cluster like so and what I'm just going to do now is just grab my text stamp from follow your own path just grab that and just add the finishing touches so what I'm going to do is just take 
some of the salty ocean and I'm going to add some little touches of blue text just to give a little bit more texture and interest plus it's a finer text so it doesn't it doesn't overpower the text behind so I'm just going to bring the little touches of blue just to the page as well there we go so I'm just taking it up up to the page which is hard to hold the plate page in place and what's nice about this is when it goes over the brown lettering it's lovely because you can still see the brown lettering through that's much better let me show you you can still see the brown lettering through there and that is your page finished so i hope you've enjoyed that i hope you've enjoyed the process i can't wait to see your interpretation and i shall be back soon so thank you all very much for your support and i'll see you all soon bye for now